Well, you hope everything is just okay so as we as we talked about in our previous video we we're looking at the general feel of how to navigate the different sections on mifos x and uh, the how to control now we want to get a deep dive into the system today we are going to be configuring the system of course that's the organization part of the system we want to see how to configure branches we want to see how to configure the different uh, users use uh, employees and all that so it's always a rule of thumb to begin with configuring the organization part of the system of course we by default you use the mifos username and password is always password when you sign in it will, it will always tell you welcome mifos but i strongly advise that the first thing you should do when you get into any system or when you just deploy your cloud instance is to go here in the users and up here there is a create user you create your new user name of course i can say this is user youtube first name is youtube and last name is password so of course there is a, a an email field here of course if you've configured your server and the system to send passwords automatically you just supply the email then the system will automatically generate the password but if you've not done so it means you have to set the password manually as you can see the moment you check this the email field is optional it is is mandatory but if you don't check this then it's optional so you have to set the password manually so let me set my password course you select the office staff you select the staff i'll be using this stuff called training youtube and of course i give this person use super user rights we shall see about users later i submit uh password repeat doesn't match uh, Submit password that did not match the expected password policy. Let me okay. Use a longer password. Good. We've managed to create our YouTube user. Of course, this YouTube user is attached to employee you training YouTube it's strongly i actually let me change this uh, it's strongly advisable to make sure that the username and uh, the employee name are the same of course email required this is youtube at gmail.com i submit so that is my username being attached to a user so as you can see we have our new user down here now when i go to the configuration where we wanted to really dwell our video onto is when you click on uh, you first want to create all the offices that are on the institution you can see currently we are having two offices i can come here and i create a new office let me call this masaka office it's under Masaka. I uh, sorry, it's under head office. I will be telling you the tricks and uh, uh, how to go about setting different offices when it comes to reporting because offices get very handy when you're running reports. Of course, there are what we call parent offices and child offices. If a child a child office is always a subset of the parent office, meaning that the moment you run uh, parent office reports you'll always get the uh, re reports of all uh, transactions that happen have happened in the child does that make sense if you run a report on the parent office it shows you aggregated information across all child uh, offices of course i've added my office when i click on the tree view i expand all yep i can see head office is 
So the moment I run a report for head office, that automatically takes, it, it shows me the different offices that actually if there are any loans that are being applied in the different offices, I'll be in position to see them up here. Okay, then after setting offices, I always go to currency configuration. I've already set my Ghana shillings, but it's just a matter of adding a new currency. Let's talk about Kenyan shillings. When you click on Kenyan shillings, you click add as simple as that. Then after that, you submit. But of course, I would prefer if I'm having only one currency because I'm not maintaining multiple currency uh, for my institution as of now. So uh, we sh then when it comes to funds, of course, a fund is a categorization of how the institution manages its portfolio according to the sources of funds. An example, if today institution A has different funders who, let's say, give that institution money to uh, finance a particular loan product, you can see that there is clean energy fund, institutional fund, or environment fund. You can say that there is, let's say, educational fund, maybe, oh, let, let me call it refugee fund, let's say, uh, we've got money from uh, funds that are supposed to help us to, let's say, hmm, fund refugee loans and all that, okay? Here I are, here we are. Now, when it comes to offices, we are done, Config currency, we are done, funds, we are done. Then the other very important thing that I usually set before I do anything onto the system, management of payment types. Payment types are different ways of which the institutional, the institution brings in or takes out money. Of course, there are different payment types like cash, mobile money, uh, bank transfer, some institutions have PayPal and everywhere. But what we usually want to recognize is the fact that the payment type can always be uh, something that we tag onto the money as it comes in, such that the system can automatically map this onto the respective GL. I, give an, I, I usually give an example of, let's say, bank payment. We have institutions that give out a check to the loanee to make sure that you can now withdraw from directly from our bank account. It may not necessarily be an RTGS transfer or a uh, money transfer, but a check payment. In that case, we have to create a payment type of that particular bank such that when you're doing a loan disbursement, this payment type will be mapped to the correct GL at product configuration. Please uh, hang on and I'll show you how we map different payment types to, uh, to the respective GLs. At the end of the day, when a transaction happens using that particular payment type, the system will automatically debit or credit the attached GL. Of course, creating a payment type is very simple. Go up here, click payment type, may, let's say DFCU bank payment. I can have a description. It's always a good practice to add description. This is a payment type that is used for DFCU bank. Is it a cash payment? No. So it's position I will always want, I always want to give it a position depending on the frequency of usage. I submit, oh sorry, I, I, I wrong in the spelling. Anyway, that's the payment type. Now when I go back, I also want to make sure that I add my employees. Remember when I was adding a user, it asked me for the employee that I'm connecting that user to. Of course, um, this is our user, but I can create another employee. Creating an employee is straightforward. You can create an employee and attach that employee to a particular office. Now, currently, Mifos was designed in a way that the moment you attach, them, an, you attach an employee to an office, he or she will be in position to see and do transactions in that particular office. So that data scope allows the system to only show that particular user information related to that office. Of course, it's still a debate of whether we should allow 
that person to serve everybody, but currently that's how it is. So my employee is going to be called Ibrahim. Uh, this is my other name. Uh, am I a loan officer? Is loan officer? This check button helps the system user to see if this person is uh, can take a portfolio or not. An example, we have different employees like the tailor, we have the accountant. These people are literally system users, but at the end of the day, they don't have a portfolio attached to them. So if you check is loan officer, of course, that translates to them being available in the drop downs of us attaching someone to a client or to a given portfolio. You can add the phone number, blah, blah, blah. This must be a numeric, of course, the system is very smart. And joined on. Remember, you cannot do a transaction on an employee on a date before he's joining date. Now, we've added our employee, uh, it's called Ibrahim, other name. Definitely, then we can say that the system is now usable. Of course, there is this one very important thing to set, password preference. When you s click on the password preference, it the system has what we call password expiration policies. We shall see that in the configuration bit in the next video when you, um, where we set the expiration policy and we tell the system that in every one month, let's say, prompt the users to reset their passwords. So when we check this, poly, uh, this password pre frequency, it will un enable the system to restrict the users on what type of password they should add at that particular uh, point. Of course, I, I usually go with uh, six characters and uh, I must include one uppercase, one lowercase, numeric, numeric digital, and no space. Okay, I submit. Of course, we shall see how that plays out in the later videos. Now, when it comes to SMS campaigns, we, sh we are going to also, we shall see that in the technical bits of how to integrate SMSs into the system. And of course, we can now create SMS campaigns that can be usable when an, uh, someone clicks to, uh, let's say, uh, sending birthday wishes, sending out uh, system side communications of loan repayments and such stuff. Then there is what we call the bulk import tool. This bulk import tool gets very handy at data migration and let's say situations of the adding bulk journal entries or bulk savings transactions, bulk loan transactions and all those different use cases. We shall be exploring more in detail as we go forward. So thank you very much guys for your attention. Let me hope this video opened your eyes on how to uh, set up the organization side of the system. So in our next video, we shall be looking at the system configurations. Of course, to give you a preamble, we shall be looking deeper into how to create on-screen reports. We add the SQL queries and uh, the audit tray. We shall also look at the global configurations and one of which we talked about earlier where we set the password expiration policies, where we set the uh, higher end things like uh, allowing backdated transactions, closure of business debt, and all that. Of course, as we shall be seeing some of this as we unfold into the whole uh, tutorial playlist, so um, just stay tuned. Of course, we shall look at how to add the different roles, uh, managing hooks and managing surveys, but of course, the we shall see some of this in the higher end videos when it comes to the system admin side of course this playlist is really tailored to those people who want to uh, get mifos up and running very fast thank you very much have a nice day we shall be uh, keeping in touch see you bye bye